kind of just wanted to hear about your direction with these pieces, like your thought process behind them, and just kind of give us a little something to think about. This is a good example, I think, of finding meaning and form. Inspiration, not everything works like inspiration striking me, me making something because I have some big idea, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm just interested in a, the scale of something or the form of something. So I think this is something I just wanted to work at a uh, medium scale because usually my work's fairly, you know, I'd say half, for half to three quarter size life, mm -hmm. sometimes life size. Um, and I was really interested in making hands, you know, that are smaller and a face that was smaller just to kind of see what that felt like. I have things that I think, right? And I have things I think about and recur reoccurring themes of stuff that I think about, right? Um, and thing, I, works will start to show hints of these underlying ideas that I'm running over in my head, but that doesn't mean the work is about that. That makes mm -hmm. sense. Um, it just is starting to show traces of this stuff seeping through and me working out things. But I would never want to say this is about X, Y, Z, even though I'm thinking about X, Y, Z a lot in my head when that's happening. Do you want to share what X, Y, Z is, or do you want to keep it completely hidden? From um, okay. This, these are examples of me like figuring out stuff in my head. Like, I don't know. I was thinking about, wanting to work in this scale again. And then, I, and then I started thinking about, I'm never really satisfied with the head just stopping, right? Mm -hmm. like, I really like the idea of things on top of the head form-wise. And I started doing that. And then I've always thought this was a good opportunity for like being a canvas. Then you think of a canvas or a headdress or some kind of thought bubble or, or window into what people are thinking or what they're about or what they present to people, right? Like, uh, I think historically, even one of the purposes of these, any, I think, well, not any, but most of the stuff I've read about when you had these big headdresses and stuff, no matter what part of the globe it originated in, it has something to do with like power and shape. You know, the same way you see a black bear, you want to put your backpack on top of your head and make yourself seem as big as possible, extend your mass in some ways, like this pomp and circumstance and and the pageantry of fashion sometimes. Um, and then I started thinking about, God, I'm going to, I'm probably going to piss a lot of people off saying this, but whatever. The, I, I think a lot about, uh, just religion, right? I'm not a fan. I think it's very, pretty clear in my work. Um, but but I, ironically, a lot of people think I do because I'm using I'm using a I'm using a vocabulary, right? That is religious in nature as far as mannerisms or mannerists, you know, that, like that art movement. Um, using that propaganda to question that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so. Think, and I put angels on the top of these with spots on top of them. So you, wearing these angels and polka dots and fashion accessories on top of your heads and keeping your walking through the sleep, walking through the day, right? Because you don't have to figure out things for yourself. You just in, consult the owner's manual, right? Mm -hmm. of what should I do here? And the onus is not on you to be a good person anymore. The onus is on other people, right? Because you're operating from a mandate from God. Uh, yeah, I, I think about this stuff a lot, and it's hard not to. This just happens to filter through a little bit on these pieces, and I don't need these to be about that. 